Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2022 film, The Blackening. Now, IMDb said 2022, but it really was released in 2023. I think it was just completed in 2022. Maybe it was supposed to be released in 2022, but didn't make it until 2023. But regardless, this is a horror comedy, and I was very excited going into this one because there aren't a whole lot of horror comedies coming out. And furthermore... Uh, even when horror com comedies come out, it's hard for them to hit the right way because getting that right mixture of the horror and the comedy really is hard to do. Um, very hard from a writing standpoint. But this one, I enjoyed. I thought this was a pretty solid film and I would recommend it especially to anyone who likes horror comedies. Uh, this one's directed by Tim Story, who also directed Barbershop. Uh, the 2005 Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, Ride Along, and the 2019 version of Shaft. It was written by Tracy Oliver, who also wrote Survivor's Remorse, Barbershop, The Next Cut, Girls Trip, and Little, which I did see Little, and I actually enjoyed that movie. Uh, and Dwayne Perkins, who wrote a bunch of episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I know a lot of people enjoy Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I think I've only seen the first episode, and I did enjoy it, I just didn't go back. Uh, I love the fact that this movie uses this following tagline, we all can't die first, because obviously it's playing off this trope, this very terrible trope that had happened in horror films for quite some time, which we've been breaking away from, thankfully, where the black character always dies first. Uh, so this is an all-black cast, this is a black-made film, and they poke a lot of fun at that, which is why their tagline is, we all can't die first. I found that to be extremely witty, and it also kind of gives you an idea of where the perspective of the movie is coming from, so you know what you're getting into. Uh, quick synopsis, uh, I don't want to give too much away, it's about a bunch of friends who are invited to spend a vacation weekend at a remote cabin, and they all show up, but it's horror and people may end up dying. So that's as much as I'm going to tell you. Uh, it's a pretty solid setup, in my opinion. So let's get into the events of the film and how I was feeling about it. Out of the gate, there's good comedy. Oh, and once again, if you didn't know, this is no spoiler review. I'm not going to spoil events of the movie. Don't worry about that. Out of the gate, there's good comedy. Um, once, once again, I was saying uh, horror comedies are really hard to get right, that kind of mixture of comedy versus horror, but I think also story. It's very hard to have like actual engaging story in horror comedies because a lot of the times they just, you know, writers just want to take all that time up with just telling jokes and making references. This movie does strike a pretty good balance of not only having a decent horror aspect to it, having good comedy to it, and also having actually a, a decently compelling story in my opinion which, like I said, la is lacking in a lot of horror comedies. Uh, the acting is good, but also playful, which is also helped by how the dialogue itself is written. So pointing to really good acting in this, which I do feel, I didn't see, I didn't really think there were any like weak links acting-wise in the movie, so that's great. So really good acting across the board. And it also points to the fact that the dialogue is you know, comedically really good, but the dialogue feels realistic, it's witty, um, and just the writing in general. Um, so a lot of times people watch movies and they don't give credit to who has written it. It's mainly just about the director and about who's acting in it. And I think it's very important to point out that writers are the base of making every single film, really. Uh, the setup to the movie is actually a more interesting story than you would assume for a horror comedy. This goes to what I was saying about getting that balance, actually injecting interesting, decent story into a horror comedy. I was very surprised, and it's weird because there were times where I'm watching the movie, and I was kind of forgetting that it was a horror comedy because I got so sucked into these segments that were just focused on the so story and focused on the horror aspect of it, and, you know not having comedy at that moment but that said they're all they're all, they also don't go too long in the movie without having comedic moments they do make sure that you know yes this is supposed to be fun and funny throughout and it is there are a good amount of references to horror movies which is always a fun thing especially if you're looking at a self-aware horror comedy movie which is exactly what this one is there's a lot of kind of societal references as well uh cultural references 
things like that. So there's plenty of different types of comedy that get thrown in. And like I said, the horror movie references, always a fun time for horror fans like myself. And I'm sure potentially you, whoever's watching this. There's something that happens between two characters that I don't think worked all that well. It did seem kind of a little bit too far, a little bit too ridiculous, because yes, this is a horror comedy, but for the most part, they don't move into like the over-the-top ridiculous realm, except for this one thing that's between characters, and it's not used a whole lot, and that's another reason where I think that, why I think that it should have just been taken out altogether, because it doesn't play all that well, it seems too ridiculous, and it is barely used, so it is kind of this question of like, why is it even in here? The film would work better without it. Now, again, I'm not identifying exactly what that is, because I don't want to spoil anything, but if you've seen the movie, maybe you know what I'm talking about, because it did seem a little just out there and kind of a weird choice, a very weird choice. Um, the integration of popular songs is quite well done in this. Uh, another aspect of keeping the movie feeling like very light and fun and engaging. So uh, I like the score. I also like the um, bigger artist uh, songs that were used in the movie. Like I said, that just injects more fun and kind of can really liven up certain scenes, and it, and it definitely does. Uh, there are a few solid jump scares in this, which I was not expecting. In a horror comedy, you really don't expect jump scares, but like I said, there's a decent horror aspect to it, and they actually injected some solid jump scares. I was very pleased with that. I'm not super susceptible to jump scares in the first place um, in any horror film, so the fact that they actually got me a little bit one or two times, uh, thumbs up on that. I was, I was impressed by that. The characters are very well written. They have good depth, and you actually feel like you know them. Again, something else that doesn't really show up a whole lot in horror comedies. Characters tend to just be like, okay, here's a character trope. We'll make that the entire character. There isn't really a backstory. They don't feel realistic. They're just a joke themselves. That is not the case with this movie. There are jokes made out of certain characters and who they may be referencing as like a typical character in other movies, but... They all have their own feel to them. They all have their own backstory, their own depth. They feel like real people. They don't feel like they're just these tropes or these stock characters that are taken from other movies and just thrown in to be like, this is the joke of who they are, you know? So I really like that they went, they went the extra mile to do that. The whole why of the story's events is pretty solid in my opinion. Again, going back to how good the writing actually is in this movie, which I was very pleasantly surprised with because, again, you know, when it comes to horror comedies, I go into it with pretty low expectations because it's hard to get right. It really is. Plus, we barely get any of them because it is tough to do. Uh, there are extra small scenes during the end credits. So just so anyone knows, if you have enjoyed the film and you want to see a little bit of extra stuff, stick around for the actual credits. Uh, they inject a few, you know, funny little things that, you may appreciate, but overall, those are my thoughts on the blackening. Uh, I thought it was a nice time. Um, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a pretty solid three and a half star rating. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised with it. I had seen a few people online saying that they enjoyed the movie and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. Usually that's kind of my impetus to go ahead and actually check out a movie, especially if it's one I wasn't hearing about prior to that. I wasn't hearing about the blackening like at all. So I don't know what their marketing campaign was really like. I didn't see anything about it. So when I saw a few people online kind of being like, hey, you know, I just checked out this movie and it was actually kind of cool. Like that keys me and I'm like, this could be a hidden gem. And sure enough, the blackening is a hidden gem at this point. Cause I, uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. It's not super popular, but I enjoyed it, and some other people did. Uh, oh, and just so people know, I, I rented it on Vudu, um, you know, Fandango's uh, movie buy, digital buying and renting website. Um, so I would recommend just getting it there. Uh, I, I don't think it's streaming anywhere else, but people can let me know in the comments if that's not accurate. And I think it was only like six bucks, six bucks and some change with tax. So not bad at all. I mean, certainly cheaper than going to the theater. But anyway, uh, that's my thoughts. Three and a half stars for The Blackening. Would love to hear your thoughts on The Blackening. Go ahead and put them down in the comments. And just give me like a sentence or two about 
why you liked it or didn't like it or felt in between on it. Uh, and we can talk about it. But regardless, uh, thank you for checking out this video. Do me a favor though, quickly, hit subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos. Thank you so much. And until next time, keep it brutal.